I want to share a little failure here. I overpressured this cell, overran it. I had it up to like 23 amps when I was doing some brazing. Just really killed it, which is a good thing. I mean, I found its weak points. It may seem like a waste of time for me to mess with this stuff the way I do to a lot of people, but just realize like the Apollo missions, if you've ever watched any of those videos, the failures they had to go through before they finally got something to work right, just kind of motivates me to not give up on stuff so easily, even though it may seem like a waste of time. Man, this thing's got some issues. Got this thing taken apart, because as I said, I was brazing this device here together with it. I managed to get these brazed on with it, but those vents kept clogging up on me for what I was using. So I had to put this new unit on. During the process of brazing that, which did very well, I thought, as far as how hot it was getting. As you can see, the brazing did flow a little better than over here. It did, in my opinion, anyway. This is map gas only. And you can see how clumpy that is. Just wasn't getting the the heat I needed. I need to get me a good setup. But this here was the uh, about 20 amps of HHO. And it's not quite as globby. I mean, it's still globby, but it seemed like I was, wasn't having any problems getting it to, to flow a little bit. This here was just a nightmare. I don't advise trying to braze anything with just map gas. So, I blew a leak in this thing at 20 amps. I, it was probably pushing over 600 amps. I'll get to the numbers. I'll put the numbers in the description. But um, it was it, at times I was peaking out at 24 amps. And there's just 24 plates on this cell. It was just a test. It just really needs the, the, the couple extra plates. And I think I should not have cut these end plates as short as I did. I should have left them sticking out of the side of the cell even left them longer because my terminals kind of got in the way as you see I have multiple attachment points on the terminals there's a point there two points attached there and attached there that reduces heating significantly when you're cranking 20 amps through stainless steel you're going to be putting off about 240 watts of heat so yeah I just got this apart and just noticed that gasket. I was searching for the leak and there it is. This rig is uh, leaving a lot to be desired. I don't like my compression system. As you can see, it's not quite over the center of the edge of the plates. My nozzles are in the way. So, selling myself short there. Not cool. I'm going to take this thing apart though. We're going to see what the plates look like after pushing 600 amps through this thing. This is, uh, I believe, uh, low grade 401 stainless steel. They're um, push plates for doors. You can buy those at Menards for pretty cheap, like $7 a piece. It's a real nice thick piece of stainless steel. So I'm going to go ahead and post this just to show you guys. just wanted to show you guys the failure that was induced by 20 plus amps being cranked through this little cell. And as I said, at 20 plus amps, you're looking at about four volts per gap, which translates to near six, 700 amps of actual chemical amperage taking place as far as the cell's concerned. I know it's only 20 amps AC, or yeah, 20 amps AC, but um, from an electrolysis cell standpoint, you're actually looking at about a 600 amp device here. Pretty awesome even though I blew it up.